In this video, I'm going to write a C program that's going to continually accept user input and write that user input to a file. So if we're going to accept user input, we're going to need some kind of character array to store that. I'm actually going to call that character array a buffer, and I'm going to use a constant to define the size of that character array. So that terminology and this approach of using a constant is actually pretty common when we're solving problems like this, to call the character array a buffer and to give it some constant defined size. So here we have a character array called buffer, and it's defined with this constant buffer size here, which is 1024, which is fairly large. That's going to handle any reasonable line of user input. So what we're going to do in our program is we're going to continually ask the user to enter lines of input. Eventually, we're going to want the program to quit. We're going to want to stop at some point. So we're going to have a special value that we could call a sentinel value that's basically going to determine the end of user input. And we'll say that that sentinel value is just the string quit. So when the user enters quit, that's where we're going to stop accepting user input. To help us solve this problem, I'm going to include a couple libraries. I'm going to include the string.h library because it has a function called strcmp that does string comparisons. And that's going to help us to recognize when we've actually encountered the string quit. I'm also going to include stdbool.h because it's going to be useful to use Booleans when we read in each line of user input. So here I'll say bool keep going is equal to true. And so long as keep growing is true, we're going to keep on reading in more lines of user input. So then here I'll say while keep going is true, and we'll have a loop that's going to accept the next line of user input. So we'll say here f gets, and we'll give it this buffer here, the buffer size, and then the file is actually going to be standard input. So f gets is going to store into the buffer here up until buffer size a line of user input. And it's going to store a line of user input from the terminal because we've used stdin here, this special keyword that says use standard input as the source of input for f gets. You could use other things. So you could actually use files and other types of input streams, but we're going to use here standard in. So once we've read in this buffer, we're going to check to see if the user has entered quit. If they've entered quit, we want to stop reading in lines of input. So I'll say here, if strcmp buffer quit is equal to zero, we'll set keep going equal to false. So strcmp is that string comparison function. And here, we're going to compare what the user entered into the buffer here with f gets with the string quit. And if they're the same, string comparison is going to return zero. So that's why we're doing a comparison here. And we're saying, well, if this ever equals zero, that means the user has entered quit and we're going to stop going. Now, when the user does enter the string, it's actually going to store the new line character that has entered into the buffer. So every time the user enters a string and hits enter, that enter character is really a new line. And so we also have to check for that as well. We'll say, we'll say slash n here, because we want to check for that as well, because that'll actually be there as well, because the user, the user will type in like Q-U-I-T and then hit enter, and then that new line character will be there as well. Just to make sure we've got this part working, let's do a printf, and let's just print out what we did store in buffer. So we'll say printf percent s buffer. So what we should have here is the part of our code that's going to be accepting user input continuously until the user enters quit. And then we'll solve the file problem next. So we'll compile this here and then we'll run it. And if I type in some input, some input is printed out. And I'll say another line of input, hit enter, another line of input. When I say quit, it's done. So we now have a program here that can read in lines of input one at a time. Now the next thing we want to do is take each line of input and write it to a file. So to do that, we need a file handle. So I'll say here, file star fh, and that's going to be our file handle. And then we need to open the file. So I'll say here, fh is equal to fopen, output.txt, and then w. So fopen is going to open up 
a file called output.txt. And it's going to open up in write mode. And it's going to return a file handle. And the file handle is what we actually use to access the file and write to the file. So fopen is going to return that file handle. If for some reason this file can't be opened, instead of returning a file handle, fopen is going to return null. And we want to check for that. Because if it does return null, then we're done. We can't really do anything at that point because we can't write to the file. The other thing that's interesting is this write mode. So in write mode, the way it works is that if output.txt already exists, we're going to overwrite it. So it's basically going to be a new file with whatever content we write to it right now. Whatever is in output.txt already, if anything, is going to be obliterated. It's going to be deleted. So just be aware of that when you write to a file with this W mode, it's going to obliterate whatever's there. You could use a mode called append if you wanted to just sort of append on to what's already there. So the first thing we'll do though is we'll check to see if the file handle is null. Because if the file handle is null, then we're dead in the water. We can't write to the file, we're done. So we'll say here, if fh is equal to null, we'll output an error message. We'll say printf error opening file. And we'll exit. And we'll exit with code one, just to signal that something is kind of a miss, that something hasn't gone correct. Normally when we return zero here, we exit with code zero, which indicates that everything is okay. When we exit here with one, or if we did the equivalent here, we said return one, this is actually signifying to the calling environment, to the shell, that something is wrong with our program. And you could say return one, or you could say exit one. It's effectively the same thing. We might as well say return one. Okay, so assuming that we can open the file okay, which we should be able to, we're now gonna wanna write each line of input to the file. So instead of printing it here, Let's actually write it to the file. It'll actually look pretty similar to this. We'll just say here f and then puts, and then we'll put the string buffer and the file handle here. And this will write to this file, this string. Now in this case here, we're not just testing it anymore. We wanna actually write this input to the file only when it's not quit. We don't wanna actually output quit to the file. So we'll actually copy this here and we'll say else, and we'll put this here. Because only when it's not quit do we wanna actually write that line of input to the file. Then down here, when we're done with the file, we'll close our access to it. We'll say f close fh, and we'll close the file handle, we'll close our access to the file. So this should be good to test now. So we'll do a recompilation here, and we'll run it. And then we'll put in our input. So we'll say some input, another line of input, and then quit. And then it should write that to the file. So we'll say cat output.txt, and we get some input and another line of input. And so we've written a program in C that can accept input from the user and write it all to a file. Check out portfoliocourses.com, where we'll help you build a portfolio that will impress employers, including courses to help you develop C programming projects.